Hello everybody, my name is Cool Blue, and I'll bring you guys this game in the MSI Dragon Cup number 3. This is gonna be Let's Do It versus Hellraisers. And I've seen Hellraisers play before, I just don't remember what I saw. I just remember seeing them play before, I just, I just don't remember. It's okay guys. Alright, so anyway, uh, like I said, I'm bringing you guys this game in the MSI Dragon Cup. Um, I've been out of the casting scene, if you guys don't know, I used to cast a lot. Um, but I've been out of the casting scene for a little bit, but I'm coming back because I have something to do next weekend for casting. Yay! So I decided why not just cast a few things here or there, and have a little fun with it while I'm doing it. And maybe get some people to watch me commentate because somebody wants to listen to me talk. <laughs> Please. Uh, anyway, all that aside though, all my jokes and banter aside, let's go jump into this game. We got Hellraisers versus Let's Do It, like I said. Um, Wisp and Axe are the first bands on both sides, respectively of course, respectively. And um, I'm I'm just, I'm just wondering about the new meta shift. Like um, I've been out of I've been uh, last time I was casting. I think the first bands were almost always almost always Brewmaster and Tide. If you could ban out those two, uh, so yeah, the meta has shifted quite a bit. Wisp is bannable again, so I'm very, I'm a little bit happy about that. Just see some more Wisp play get picked up, and we also got ourselves a Troll again ban out, which I actually at the end of my casting reign of you know before I took my long break from casting, uh, Troll and Faces Void were the new big thing that everybody was pretty much doing. Also, Troll Roller has been tearing up some pubs, uh, allegedly, so uh, he's a very annoying person facing pubs. So anyway, all that aside though, let me try to keep my heater on, okay. No, sorry, you, you might hear noise in the background. If you do, it's because Cool Blue's really cold. I promise. It's like... It's like too cold in my house. I don't know why I do that. Anyway, all that aside though, uh, yeah, Troll Roller plus Wisp, I understand those two. Wisp giving that very, very huge global presence, and uh, I'm not sure what her, what her new combination is nowadays, but I'm pretty sure... <laughs> I'm pretty sure her new combination is just as broken as her old combination. Uh, we also see a sniper game ban out once again. Um, I've seen sniper game ban out a few times. I'm not sure what's going on with the sniper thing. Maybe sniper's just found his new niche play. Maybe he's the new flavor of the week. Maybe he's the new morphling that we'll see played a million times and it never played ever again. I don't really know. All I really know is the sniper's banned out by Let's Do It, so they don't want that long range annoyance coming out from them. Uh, coming out from Hellraisers. Moving on to Hellraisers though, they pick up the Shadow Fiend and the Bristleback. We saw some Shadow Fiend bristle, or we saw some Shadow Fiend play last time around, and uh, <coughs> excuse me, Shadow Fiend Tornado Stick. I heard somebody talk about it in a commentary, and I did not believe it was like Shadow Fiend with Tornado Stick. What? And they said, yeah, Shadow Fiend Tornado Stick gives you enough mana to continuously drop your raises, and also gives you a nice little slight escape to basically drop your ult and then tornado and then drop your ult again when you die. So again, I guess we might see the Tornado Stick Shadow Fiend. I mean, I'm a slight believer now. I don't. I don't think it's the greatest thing in the world, but what else is going to get? Scotty, BKB, please. Those are two good of items. Uh, anyway, moving all aside, all my pretentiousness aside and my judging of the last strategy that I saw, Bristleback and Shadow Fiend, they should be decent. Shadow Fiend going to be playing that mid, Bristleback going to be playing that suicide solo, presumably, so we're probably going to see how we're going to get some powerful jungler. I'm not sure if Chin has made it back into the meta, but I would love to see some Chin with some Ancient Creeps. Agonim Scepter is really awesome. Uh, so that'll be really fun to see if that does happen. Uh, but all that aside, though, we got Juggernaut getting banned out by the side of Hellraisers. So Juggernaut still tearing things up, still being the the, uh, the star of the pro scene, so to speak. And uh, I actually went back and looked at the numbers. I did not realize that Juggernaut's attack speed had been reduced enough to where he's basically the second. He has the second lowest base attack time on the whole entire game. If I'm not mistaken, which I think it might be slightly mistaken, there might be somebody right in front of him, but I think I think in order it goes from uh, you know not counting Alchemist's uh, unstable or uh, chemical rage, not counting chemical rage or Rubik's chemical rage if he's still it. But I think the lowest base attack time in the whole entire game goes from Oracle to Juggernaut, then to Anti Mage. And uh, if you guys don't know what base attack time is, basically the lower your base attack time is, the faster you can actually attack. So somebody with uh, a base attack time of 1.5 or 1.45, which I think is what Juggernaut has. Uh, attacking at f with 500 attack speed is going to attack faster than somebody with a base attack time of 1.7, which is what everybody else in general has, unless they're an exception. With the thing, I think the person who attacks the slowest. I don't, know, I don't remember who attacks. The I think Cherry Protector attacks the slowest. I think it's like 1.8. <laughs> Oh yeah, all aside though, that basically means that uh, the lower your base attack time is, the faster you can attack. So Juggernaut is the second in line for attacking the fastest in the whole entire game, which I actually didn't realize. Uh, and like I said, if I'm not mistaken, uh, with the recent changes to his attack numbers, so I think his, his is like 1.35, uh, something like that. I, know, I, have to, I have to go Google it again, my bad guys, if I got that wrong. 
Uh, but yeah, moving back onto the game, though, let's talk about what we see, because we got an Earthshaker game banned now by the side of Let's Do It, which makes sense, because the Spiderlings are going to give him so much, so much bounce damage. Uh, you also got a Meepo game banned up by Hellraisers, which I did not foresee Meepo getting picked. I didn't know that we were in the Age Meepo, but if we are in the Age Meepo, I am cool with it, because I love seeing some nice little Meepo micro play, because I know I can't do it, so why not watch other people do it better than me? And that's how life works sometimes, guys. That's how life works sometimes. Barrow again banned up by Let's Do It. So no annoying lasso shenanigans or shenanigans. Uh, and on the side of Hellraisers, we're just going to wait for them to pick up the next pick. Uh, let's do it. Respond it with everything they have so far with the Dragonite. Which I actually like Dragonite as a hero, especially if he goes mid versus Shadow Fiend. Um, as a hero for carry, Dragonite and I have a few issues seeing eye to eye. Not necessarily because he has a helmet and it's very shiny outside and I can't see, my eyes are squinting. But because him as a carry, I think Dragonite hits his true stride as a carry once he is level 16. That ice dragon is so strong. Not only not only does he have splash damage, not only does he have poison damage, but he also has a freaking free Scotty at level 16 with that dragon form. And it's a really, really, really awesome thing for him to have. Um, but I don't think until until he is that point, I don't think he's that strong. Um, I don't like Dragonite as a carry because he needs level 16 to actually become the super OP, oh my gosh, run away now carry. Whereas like, you know, level, level 15, or sorry, level 11, he's like, eh, he can do a little bit more damage. Level 6, eh, he can burn down your tower, it's really annoying. Level 16 is like, oh my gosh, run away please. So Dragonite as a carry, I think he can do well. Um, I just think he needs a lot of space to be created, which I think he'll definitely get with Broodmother and also with the Dry Ranger on the side of Let's Do It. Uh, I've seen this once before where you had a Dry Ranger, Beastmaster, and you also had a Visage. I don't know if we're going to see a Visage on the side of Let's Do It side. They do have room open for a support Visage. That'll be really nice to see uh, for them to get. But, you know, with the Jarmage being picked up, maybe she's the primary carry, maybe she's going to be playing in the mid. I don't really know where the role is going to be played at. Um, I haven't seen Dragonite play in a while. I don't know if Dragonite still saw to as a uh, mid person. But if he isn't, then I'll be a little bit surprised. If he is, then I'll be like, oh, okay. I was kind of expecting that, you know, based on the lineup. But all, all in all, all in all, I think Hellraiser's lineup so far is going to be... Oh, with Ogre Miser pick up. I was going to say, Hellraiser's lineup so far is going to be survivable enough to actually go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Let's Do It. Uh, with Ogre Magi, it actually puts it up a little bit higher now, because they can get the stun on top of somebody like a Draw Ranger, or maybe they can get a stun on top of Dazzle before he can actually drop a Shallow Grave on top of somebody like Draw Ranger. Uh, but then again, Draw Ranger's Silence is pretty OP. Okay, I wouldn't say OP. Maybe it's stronger than it, than it looks. I'll put it that way. There have been a few games that I had where Draw Ranger's Silence is the reason why I died a lot. And it was like, no, I was so close to killing you, but no, it was had to drop the silence. Anyway, all that aside. My rants aside, Jarringer Silence is going to be a key component in this whole entire game. Also, Dazzle with his Shallow Grapes. Jarringer, not the tankiest of, excuse me, not tankiest he carries. And our brew mother, she might, she might need to get a few pickups on top of somebody like a Vengeful Spirit. Uh, Ogre Magic, a nice person to have versus all the Spiderlings. He can basically burn them all to death. Because you know, when you face something that you really don't like, you just burn it with fire, right? That's what we do, right? It's like, I don't like you, burn it with fire. Time. Five seconds remaining. Radiant team pick. Okay. That was gross. Alright, we got a nice talk again, Ben, about Let's Do It. And also, we got ourselves a uh, Shadow Shaman pick up by Let's Do It as well. So they might be going for the push trend. I don't really know. This is a little bit hard to tell. But uh, Hellraiser, they have the Organizer, they have the Enigma for the jungle. So Bristleback will most definitely play that Suicide Solo lane. Uh, hmm. Hmm. Actually, let me take that back. Is this going to be a try lane with Bristle? Yeah, okay, never mind. Yeah, that makes sense. Trying with Bristle, so pretty much a kill lane. Uh, Bristleback, Ogre Magi, and a Vengeful Spirit is going to be a kill lane, to say the least of it. Um, Ogre Magi can drop the stun, Vengeful Spirit can drop her stun, Bristleback can get the quills plus some right click damage going. That's going to be really nice for him. I think more or less is going to be Ogre Magi with the fire and uh, Vengeful Spirit with the stun and Bristleback with his quills to actually go for the kills. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see how they decide to play that out. But all in all, I think we're going to be playing the jungle though. It's going to be a little bit fun to see. He's actually getting himself a uh, little bit, a few things to get ready. He's getting himself a few things to get ready. Central Ward's already getting dropped already, so Central Ward's getting picked up first on the side of LDI. And let's do it. Let's go ahead and start off with their introductions because they're on the Radiant side. Starting off with this Dragonite with a very cool looking helmet. Look at him. Look at him. Looking all cool and whatnot. Look at him. All epic like. Uh, we see Sasu on that Dragonite. Moving over to this, um, to this Jar Ranger. We see ourselves Supreme playing that Jar Ranger. And on this Dazzle, we see ourselves Nisha playing Dazzle. On this Broodmother, we see ourselves Exotic Deer. Oh my gosh, because who doesn't like Exotic Deer with a very exotic mask? 
SNFs, SMS, SNS, SNM, SNM. Moving over to this Shadow Shaman, last one least for the LDR. Let's do it. We see ourselves Elysia. Playing that Shadow Shaman. Moving to the side of Hellraisers. On this Enigma, we see ourselves 1 1 1, because three ones are better than one. And on this Organ Magi, we see ourselves Gotta Am on that Organ Magi. Moving over to this Bristleback, we see ourselves Mantis playing that Bristle. And on the Shadow Fiend, we see ourselves Dread. And last but not least, on this Vengeful Spirit with the very, 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 very pretty hair, we see ourselves PSM playing that Vengeful Spirit. And it's all the callouts so far. As far as rune positioning, it looks like uh, Hellraiser is going to get one rune and the other one is going to go towards LDI. They're doing some dewarding already. Nice dewarding. <coughs> An exotic deer going to give us that nice little boost in levels. Going to continue to run away. And she kills the web. Immediately kills the web. Nice little play coming out there. So that way you don't you don't you don't want to keep your web there. I do it all the time, but you want you want that to go back on cooldown. So you just kill your web. You kill your initial web so that way. That way, one, that crappy web won't replace your other not-so-crappy web, and two, yeah, you just do it because of that. And you don't really need to keep it there. I mean, I would like to keep it there, I guess. And hold on, I'm not, I'm not sure. Does it stay off the cooldown? Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, your, your charges still get cooldown, so never mind. Ignore, ignore what I was saying before. It doesn't really matter. Exotic Deer just killed it just because. Meanwhile, down bottom, Ogre Magi and crew are going to be hanging around the corner doing some nice little creep pulling. Uh, Ogre Magi getting scouted out by the creep because of Observer Ward. Observer Ward OP, please nerf. And now he'll be running away. He'll be running away. Got him. Does have no points spent just yet. Shadow Shaman looking for something. I don't think I should do anything. Jaron's going to get, or get himself a nice little nice little chunk of damage on top of Ogre Magi. Nice little chunk of damage. Speaking of chunk of damage, or, or, Shadow Shaman deciding to go for that nuke first. So he will be getting a nice little chunk of damage as well. I um, mean, we got a Trilene with Enigma, which is actually really interesting. Nice little stun coming up from Vision Spirit. A lot of damage coming towards, Vin or towards, yeah, coming towards VS already. Shadow Shaman and crew getting a nice little nice little bit of work out of that. Out of that uh, Precision or, or yeah, Precision or If Shadow Shaman actually might be going down, he will be not burning to death, but they're going to be turning around the kill. These guys are just going back and forth. 1-1-1. One, one, one. Sadly left his Eidolons behind him to go continue to farm. And he decided to go forward, just you know, go for a little bit of damage. Meanwhile, PSM might be getting caught out. Shadow Shaman and crew, they're pinging him. I don't know if they know he's over there. Looks like they do know he's over there. PSM does have a century war, and that's early. It's nothing else to his name. So pretty much gonna run around the front side. Oh my gosh, she might be catching from us, but yes, she does catch. No, she doesn't catch sight of her. Just barely didn't catch catch sight of her. Here comes the frost arrows. PSM might be in a little bit trouble. The uh, ulti, uh, the stun is available for her, and PSM gonna be able to make it out of there just far enough, just far enough to keep herself alive. Meanwhile, Shadow Shaman doing some pulls. Take a nice little chunk of damage coming up from the creeps. And the camp, did he get blocked or did he just mistime that? I don't really know. But looks like he might be going down. The Ogre Magi has his stun available. Here comes a burn. Here comes a stun. Here comes a boom. Here comes one right click, two right clicks, and three right clicks. Yes, he gets three right clicks, but it's not going to be enough. Ogre, or anti nah. Shadow Shaman able to stay alive long enough. The Wave of Terror actually almost enough to actually kill a Shadow Shaman. Uh, Wave of Terror does a whole entire 30 damage level one, so that would have been very impressive if Vince Spirit would have gotten a kill. It been very, very, very impressive, but sadly it wasn't. Wasn't impressive enough. Speaking of being impressive enough, we got Mantis on that bristleback up top having not as much fun up top. Uh, two pool sprays getting thrown out. He does have his two points up cool, so it does more damage. And also has one point up bristleback. Uh, he is running out of regen though, so he probably needs to get a courier to bring him something important out there. I'm assuming he's <coughs> excuse me, I'm assuming he's gonna be building a Vanguard into probably a Crimson Guard this game. It's really hard to tell. But looks like we got a uh, Broodmother and crew coming through. Bristle taking a nice little chunk of damage, getting slowed by the spiders, also getting slowed by the dazzle. He will be losing his life. Mantis can't really do much. No TP support available. Looks like he does get murdered into the ground. Broodmother getting blocked up by her own spiders. And exotic deer gonna be able to keep himself alive. So first blood going the way of Hellraisers. Actually, no, sorry. First blood going, going the way of uh, let's do it, but Hellraiser is immediately, immediately retaliating with the kill on top of Dry Ranger. They're going to be going for this kill on top of this bottom tower. Uh, they're going to go for the creep stat. Nice little, nice little, nice little conversion right there. Shadow Shaman hiding in the trees, though. They're going to go for an Enigma. Enigma might be in trouble, taking quite a bit of damage. Actually, he needs to back away as soon as possible. He gets shackled up. Looks like Supreme is going to come in just in time. Here comes the damage. Looks like Enigma, will he be able to make it out far enough? Looks like he will be able to make it out far enough just in time. Goddamn, I'm going to go and TP out. Will they stop him in time? Looks like no, the answer is no. Ogre Magi going to be able to make it out alive. Enigma going to continue the run. The Great Chase is what Dazzle's on right now. Nisha really wishes he had the moon speed that Enigma has right now, but sadly he doesn't. Enigma with the boots moving at 350, whereas, Enig or, whereas Shadow Shaman is moving at 305. Which is funny. That means they move at the same exact speed if they have boots. Because boots give you 45 moon speed? No, 50. 50? 45. Oh, 50. Okay, never mind. Yeah, Sh Dazzle will be moving faster, unfortunately. But he doesn't have boots yet. <clears throat> 
Double damage going towards Dazzle. Speaking of double damage, we got Exotic Deer having some double damage versus these creeps. Having a whole bunch of fun, just skipping the whole entire tower. He's like, yeah, yeah, you know, I was on some farm. I was going to go and kill some creeps up here. That's what he does. And Bristol can't really do anything but just tank the creeps and just try to kill as many as he possibly can before his tower dies. Uh, safe lane tower dying, though, is going to be a big issue. It's going to be a big issue because Bristol's not going to have that much room to farm. And, uh... I mean, you could put Bristle bottom. I would have liked to see Bristle bottom and Enigma top. But they knew they knew Brumel was going to be going to Suicide Lane. And uh, anyway, so Enigma would not have had that much of a fun time. Uh, having Enigma playing play the Suicide Lane with the Trialing, though, is actually really cool. Because that means they have an aggressive Trialing setup between these three. And they could possibly go for some kills. Enigma can lead with the Malefice. Vince Spirit can follow up with the stun. Looks like, oh, no, looks like Enigma might be going down here very soon. Nice little slow. Here comes the damage coming up 11, or 1 on 1. And damage coming up with Supreme as well. These guys are just trading back and forth. And I think they're just trying to, they're just trying to stabilize by the looks of it. Enigma's Eidolon is coming forward. Supreme taking a little bit of damage. He gets healed up by Healing Self coming off from Shadow Shaman. Meanwhile, middle lane, we got Shadow Fiend. He's going to be the X Factor this whole entire game. I think the more Shadow Fiend can do, the better off he'll be. Like I said, DK does have a very, very, very delayed delayed presence in the game. Like, like he doesn't really become super effective until like level 11. Uh, sorry, level 16. Speaking of level 16, we got Shadow Fiend and crew going to go for the kill. Easy kills, easy. Dragonite not having that much of a fun time. Just getting melted. Uh, his magic resistance is only sent at 25%. His physical damage resistance is 32%, which is cool. That's one point inside his dragon's blood. So that's three extra armor going his way. Yep, three extra armor going his way. But armor can do squat for you when there's so much magic damage hitting you in the face. Just, just how it comes. Just how it goes down, guys. It's how it goes down. Speaking of going down, Jaranger, she has not, or she has gone down once. Sadly, she was the retaliation kill. Uh, but she's doing decent as far as her farm goes. Speaking of which, let's take a look at the last hits and eyes. Brood Mother sitting at the top of that. Forty-six last hits. Pretty much got every single creep that's spawned so far, give or take, like you know the other half that I'm not counting. Meanwhile, we got Broodmother. Oh, nope, nope. Broodmother peeing on top of Bristle saying, hey, top tower's about to go low. And Bristle's, Bristle's not looking too healthy. A bottle is available for Bristle. I don't know if they see the courier, but a hand of Midas is going to be the big item pickup for Broodmother. So she's going to be very happy with that. And she runs away to eat a creep. She's going to eat herself a troll. And extra XP going her way and moves along and continues to farm. Meanwhile, top lane, we got Dazzle showing up. He's going to be trying to help, help uh, Broodmother go for a kill on top of Bristle. So Broodmother did take some damage and she did kill the trees. Pause does come through. Uh, I'm not sure what the pause was for, but they did pause. Meanwhile, down bottom, Vengeful Spirit, Sentry Ward's available. She is just trying to go for some D-Ward, Dota. Uh, Enigma not being in the jungle really, really sucks, but I mean, like I said, considering that Broodmother is going to be up in the top lane doing this anyway, it makes a lot of sense. Otherwise, Enigma would be getting, get, would be getting picked off quite a bit. His Eidolons would be getting turned to spiders, and he would not be having as much fun. Speaking of not having as much fun, though, Bristleback versus Broodmother is really, really interesting because Bristleback technically has the advantage, but Broodmother does have a lot of damage as well. Like, look at all the spider has gone. Just like that. Two cool sprays, three cool sprays, and they're all gone. Actually, uh, yeah, three cool sprays, and all the spiderlings are gone. Mantis, he's, he's having a lot of fun versus his brood. That's a lot of free gold. He's just got two. I think he just bought his boots, so he just basically went right back up to the same amount of gold he had before. Uh, but there is a Dazzle hanging on top, though, so he doesn't need to be careful. The slope from Dazzle is not that impressive, but it's still impressive enough to make Bristle run. Speaking of making Bristle run, we got down bottom, we got Jaron, or we got uh, Shadow Summer trying to run away. Nice little tree kill coming up from Enigma. Here goes the damage coming on top of Supreme, and Supreme will be going down as well. The sounds from the Drow Ranger comes through, not going to be enough. Let's do it. Going to be the ones to go down immediately, and also the team fight. Going so far in favor of Hellraisers that they do get the tower as well. Uh, Me on top, Bristle. Bristle forced a TP out. <coughs> Did not want to lose his life too soon. Dread trying to go for the rotation. And this, oh man, let's talk about this. Shadow, or Shadow Fiend versus Broodmother is good as well because, hey, you can kill spiders with raises. Easy, easy, easy game. Easy game all day long. No, we got Bristleback running up top as fast as he possibly can. He is level 6, so he can get his warpath going. But looks like Top Tower is going to be going down before he knows it. Bristleback only has himself a nice little uh, ring of... Ring of... Ring of thing? Ring of... Ring of... Yeah. Ring of Basilius. Jesus. And now we got Bristleback in a little bit of trouble, taking quite a bit of damage. He's going to be going for a chase on top of Dazzle. Dazzle might be in a lot of trouble. The slow is not going to be enough. Bristleback just needs like two right clicks. He's going to be able to get one. Here comes a heal as well. A lot of damage coming his way. Now we got Bristleback going to be forced to heal up. Doesn't want to die like this. Looks like he kills a bunch of spiders. He's going to be going toe to toe with Broodmother right now. Broodmother can't really run away. She's actually trying to juke left, juke right. And she might be going down here very soon. Uh, we got somebody showing up. There's going to be a Shadow Summer showing up. He's going to go for Shackle. Shackle's not going to be enough. Looks like, yes, no, nope, doesn't matter. Gets the kills on Broodmother anyway. Double kill going towards Bristleback. And he's going to go for it. He's going to go for the third kill. Shadow Shaman, he just might be in trouble, bro. Bristle needs to back away now. I think, yeah, that's a bad idea. Bristle needs to back away. Mantis, you did a good job. Don't, 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 don't overdo it. Don't overdo it, bro. 
Meanwhile, DK does die in mid versus Hellraiser's trifecta or quadfecta showing up. Everybody else from the Hellraiser showed up mid. They're gonna go for kills on mid tower and they do get it. And the shenanigans from Broodmother seem to be not working as well as they wanted to. Uh, Mechanism is fully finished up on Shadow Feet, so he's gonna be surviving with that. Ogre Magi has himself a Orb of Venom, so he can just be more annoying. Down bottom, <coughs> Drown Ranger. She's hanging out with her Ring of. Well, not even Ring of Quilla. It will be up here soon, but it looks like she's trying to go for a hand of Midas, which will be a good item, but I think she needs to TP out of here. Um, she doesn't see who's around the backside. She doesn't know who's around the backside. TP score gets purchased up, and she buys her power threats fully. So she's going to hide around the corner, just wait for a second, sees Ogre Magi show up, and she'll probably see somebody show up from the backside, a Vental Spirit, and she no longer regrets her decision to hide in the corner. So Supreme doing a good job running away, going to continue to go with the run. A lot of people from the Dire are hanging on down bottom though, Enigma is in the all up in the jungle of LDI, and uh, LDI, I don't, I, don't, I don't really know how how well things are going to go for him, because Enigma is saving up for what looks to be a Blink Dagger. Mechanism fully finished up by by the Shadow Fiend already. It looks like Enigma. Oh, he's going to throw out the Malphys. Jarmager, bro, you just might be dead. Here comes the nice little Death Pulse coming through. Here comes Shadow uh, Fiend. Not going to be able to get stunned. Beautiful sounds coming from Jarmager. She's going to be on Make Us Alive. The sound is just barely catching the precipice. The precipice, guys. The precipice of Venture Spirit's foot. And because her foot got silenced, she couldn't talk at all. Makes a lot of sense, I know. Alright, Bristleback gonna give himself a nice little farm. He's gonna be able to kill all the spiders. Oh my god, come on, one more. Yes, a lot of gold going his way. One more, one more. Come on, Bristle, you can do it. It's like a pinata. Sephir is made of gold and exotic deer. Not having a lot of fun. Just hates that. Just hates Bristle. Meanwhile, Shadow Fiend in a lot of trouble. He's gonna be trying to run, away, run the other way. Mechanism available. He's gonna pop that if he needs to. Looks like no, he's not gonna pop it. Instead, he's gonna continue to run. He's gonna go for chasing on top of Jarringer. Oh, Mechanism needs to be popped now. Looks like Mechanism does get popped, and he's now officially in a little bit of trouble. Drops out the ulti. Not enough. To, uh, yes, enough damage to kill Shadow Summer. Kills one, kills the other, and kills the other triple kill going for Shadow Fiend. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful ulti. Catching everybody in the middle of that fight, and sadly, not enough, not enough life between the three of them. They all just get smacked into the ground. Dread. Lucky Hastrun as well. I mean, he planned it out, I guess. And now we got eight Hellraisers just basically raising all kinds of hell in this bottom tower. Like, that bottom lane is gone. There's there's really nothing that they can do on Odia. I mean, Dragonite can drop his ult and then do some damage over time to him. Maybe he can stun Ogre Magi before he. Oh, no, no, too late. Oh, he can stun. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh that's happening. Yeah, Dragonite looking for a stun. Oh, Maleficent. Oh, Maleficent, you OP, please nerf. And he slowed too much. He slowed too much to continue the chase, which makes it very unfortunate. Now, if Dragonite had his level 16, oh my god, those guys would be dead. Because he'd be like, let's do this. And he'd slow the crap out of him. But Dragonite needs to get in what? A range? It adds uh, 300 range? How much range does it add to his stun? Uh, it doesn't really matter. It looks like Vincent Spirit gonna be the one to take some damage. TP coming in for the Shadow Fiend, who has Booster Trap already. Now we got a lot of damage coming towards Dragonite. He might be going out here. He's gonna go and TP out while he can. Looks like he will be able to make it alive. Yes, just barely able to make it alive. Another TP coming out from Shadow Shaman. They're all gonna be able to stay alive. Meanwhile, Supreme and also Exotic Deer are gonna be showing up to the mid tower. Just doing as much damage as possible. And middle tower finally gonna be going down. So one tower, two towers going the way of LDI. They're definitely not out of this, but they are down in the tower count. Speaking of being down in the tower count, let's look at the gold graph. Uh, the net worth is showing that Hellraisers are a little bit ahead. Or, yeah, actually no, they're, they're a decent bit ahead. That's 1,000 gold going their way. Uh, it's effectively uh, one tower. Let's see, one, two, three, one, two. Yeah, effectively one tower. No, oh, wait, hold on. Whoop, I, hear, I heard a swap. I heard a swap. I heard a swap. I know what's going on. We got a burst back, gonna be going down. My bad, guys. Missing team fights here. And meanwhile, we got a kill coming on top of Shadow Shaman. He gets blown up. And now we got Dazzle running as fast as possible. Can. Nisha doesn't want to die right now, but we got somebody else getting chased. Supreme just might be the next casualty in this whole entire fight. They're pinging both ways. Jarringer just running as fast as he possibly can. She's trying to get out of there. The power try is just helping to tread through the water and the webs and all the dirtiness that is Dota. And looks like she's gonna get tornadoed up by the Enigma. Enigma, gonna be able to get some black hole if he needs to. He might be able to catch both. Looks like no, they're gonna get the kill on top of Shadow or else, oh, they're gonna kill on top of Jarringer. Uh, Dazzle trying to keep himself alive. Go to go ahead and continue to run away. Ogre Magi has a stun available in 3 seconds time. Ogre Magi has the HP left to continue to run. Nice little juke coming from Dazzle. Dazzle gonna be able to juke left, juke right. Nice little stun coming from DK. He's gonna go for the kill on top of this Vincent Spirit, but it looks like he's getting blown up right now. Shadow Shaman, I heard it start from Wars. I don't really know where, we got that where they got placed. Let's not pay attention to that. Let's pay attention to the Vincent Spirit about to be going down. Swap was available. Meanwhile, we got goddamn on that Vincent, or on that, uh, Ogre Magi, he's gonna be trying to run away. Broodmother and crew do have enough damage to actually get the kill. And now we got the Serpent Wars showing up here. Defensive Serpent Wars, looks like they all get picked off. Or at least all the spiders get picked off. And just got so many souls. Holy crap. That was like a full Yasha worth of gold right there. Like he just basically said, Yeah, I got, I got enough kills. I bought Yasha. So what? No hand of Midas on him, sadly, though. 
Which is okay, I think you only need one hand of minus per team, but Bruno Miller has a hand of minus on their side, on LDI, and I thought I thought Bristle Oh okay, never mind. They don't even have a hand of minus. I thought Bristle had a hand of minus, but he doesn't. Instead he has a Vanguard because Crimson Guard OP, please nerf Falvo. Moving on to the uh, XP graph, we see the XP is showing us that HR or Hellraisers are actually doing a decent job as far as keeping the XP graph in, in their favor. A lot of spiderlings were killed in the making of this video, guys. And also, oh my gosh, look at this stack. Oh, oh, Bristle. Oh my god, Bristle, do you even farm, bro? Do you even farm? Like, oh, Jesus. They've been doing a good job of stacking, too. I wasn't paying attention to this. But that's a lot of physical damage. A lot of levels are going to be going the way of the supports as well. And Enigma going to show up because, hey, why not? Why not just help out get a little bit of farm? Bristle and crew just having a nice little bit of fun time. All the farm in the world. Bristle back, getting pumped up as well. And this might be enough for his Crimson No, it's not going to be enough for his Crimson Guard. It was going to be close to it. Illusion gets popped, he pops himself a nice little few stacks of his bottle charges, throws the illusions the other way. And nah oh man, Shadow Fiend. Shadow Fiend, such sad. Such sad. Meanwhile, Brumel are gonna take a moment. Take a moment to just look at this top tower and just evaluate how how much she wants to kill it. She really wants to kill this top tower. Look at it. It's just ugly looking. So she's gonna go ahead and kill this top tower. Shadow Shaman, he does get murdered. I don't know where. He, he gets murdered by Shadow Fiend. So he's going to uh, be regretting his decision. Meanwhile, Roshan is going to get beat to death right now. Negative 2 armor, negative, uh, wow, negative 4 armor total. It looks like the Aegis is going to be going towards Shadow Fiend. Or it's going to leave it there. Okay, there we go. Shadow Fiend picks up the Aegis. But Brumelli did get a nice little tower up top, so that's going to be some nice little pushing coming from her way. And she does have a lot of gold saved up too. I'm not sure if we're going to see a Necro Book brood, uh, but she might want to try to invest in the push. Uh, Vladimir's offering is a decent item for her to go for, for her Spiderlings, just to help them push. And she also has a web available here in 14 seconds time, so she will have another web. Gonna go ahead and just spawn some more spiderlings and continue to attack the top tower. A lot of damage coming towards the top tower, but who shows up? That's right guys, Shadow Fiend. One raise, two raise, three raise. Sadly, no, not three raises. Just two raises. Two raises and they're fired. Speaking of being fired, we got Nigma. He's in a lot of trouble. He's gonna be going down, not having the best of times, living life, you know, because he's that thing called dead. And uh, they're gonna be running away. Uh, Dragonite is level 11, so he's gonna be a decent amount of damage coming from him now. The splash damage will be there. Uh, BKB almost finished up, which would be fantastic until that black hole comes through, of course. And then we got Shadow Fiend just, just swagging on top, like, yeah, oh, Brew Mother, you here? Okay, I'm just gonna keep walking. You kill those creeps, I'll kill these creeps. We'll just call it a day, bro. Let's we'll call it a day. But uh, they do need some detection though, like maybe a gym and two side. I think a dust appearance will be a little significantly better. Uh, but both sides just canceling out the creep wave. Uh, we got somebody running on the corner. Vincent Spirit showing up. Region room bottled off for her. I didn't realize she had a bottle. Uh, bottom tower does get hit with a nice little surfing ward action. Fortify does come through as well, and they're going to be able to defend bottom tower, not within deny range. So unfortunately, they can't deny right now. But the defense is still there, and they're drawing a nice little straight arrow, a beeline going straight up to the top lane, saying, hey, let's push this. Enigma going to be the one to walk into a jungle. Oh no, Enigma, you don't want to die right now. I think his his uh, his Jedi senses are tingling. He sees nothing and expects everything. So he's going to be able to make himself some Eidolons, and he needs to run away. Oh, nope, nope. He doesn't run away. Instead, they all meet each other mint. Smoke gank coming through. That's going to be a Bristleback all by himself. Oh, they see him. All Bristle sees. He's going to continue to run. Crimson Guard getting popped immediately. He's trying to run as fast as he possibly can, but I don't know how fast he can run with that DK, and also with that Shadow Shaman. And sadly, they don't stack their stuns enough. Looks like Bristleback going to survive. Nice little swap coming from Bristleback. She's going to go for some type of DK. DK in a lot of trouble. He's going to go TP out while he can. Looks like the damage will not be enough to get the kill. Instead, Instead, nothing happens at all. That's pretty much how all Dota works, guys. It's like, you do so much work and then nothing happens. Shao Shaman gonna go ahead and TP out. Tornado State getting used on top of his Jowranger. Jowranger, unfortunately, gonna be the one to go down. She can't pop herself her, uh, her Mask of Madness, but I don't think it mattered at that point. She would've died anyway. Died from the Malefist damage. And Vince Spirit still has herself a regen room, so just looking to use more mana. And also lose a little bit more HP. Meanwhile, Brewmiller going for the slow push up top. Exotic Deer doing the thing that Brewmiller does. You know, just pushing towers. Enigma kills a spider out of spite. Get it? Don't spite the spider. And now, ooh, can she kill him? Can she kill? Can she kill him? No tornado stick up on top of Shadow Fiend, but Shadow Fiend does have the mechanism. Uh, looks like a little bit too much support is around him, so Brumel is going to continue to focus on the objective at hand, and she does want to go for that tower. But Shadow Fiend doing a good job of denying Brumel that a spider link just by just by farming. Like he's doing two things. He's helping himself out, and he's also denying Brumel a lot of things. Speaking of denying things, Enigma's still up top, 11, 
11, I don't know what you're doing here, bro, but it looks like you might be going down. Broomother going to drop the ulti. Tornius, it comes through. Oh my gosh, does it get rid of? Yes, it does. Oh, she's so sad. Broomother going to be taking a little bit of damage. No dust appearance available. Looks like Shadowfin going to drop the ulti. Gets a kill anyway and kills a few spiderlings as well. Why the freak not? And if you guys don't know, if you guys don't know how Dota works, because if you don't, then I feel very sad for you, son. But looks like they're going to go for killing top of Shadow Shaman. Shadow Shaman is going to be going now. Surfer Wars were available. Sadly, he did not get to drop him. Speaking of getting to drop him, we got Salsu on that DK. He's going to go ahead and just kill his bottom tower. Because he can. Uh, Black Hole was used. DK needs a TP out now before forever hold his peace. Looks like he's going to go ahead and just flap away. Flappy Bird. Flappy DK. Flappy Games. Uh, but yes, like I said, uh, if you guys don't know how Dota works, Tornado Stick, the way Yule Scepter Divinity works, is that whenever you get thrown into the air, it purges you of whatever buffs or debuffs that you have. Which is why, if you ever play Ability Draft, I'm not saying that you guys should play Ability Draft, but you probably should play Ability Draft. If you ever play Ability Draft and you have permanent invis, and somebody throws a dust on you, you can just tornado yourself, and then by the time you land, you'll not only still be invisible, but they won't be able to see you anymore. So it's a really, really OP item. A lot of people underestimate it. Uh, that said, it worked against Broodmother in that whole entire fight, because Broodmother's ulti is a, is a buff. So when she gets tornadoed, her buff goes away. And when her buff goes away, she's very sad. She's a very sad mother. So yeah, Broodmother, unfortunately, unfortunately feeling very bad about that whole entire thing. And uh, she's, she's, not, she's not gonna have the best of times. You know, if that keeps happening. If that happens like maybe two or three more times, I feel like spirits will be broken. No spirit breaker required. Speaking of spirits being broken, Bruce might gonna hang out around the side, just gonna go ahead and just jump some a few quills. You know, he wants a more, more warpath stacks, why not? And Crimson Guard is available too, it's ready to go. Um, meanwhile, we got Broodmother and also we got Jaron just showing up, just trying to go for this mid or top tower. Top tower does go down. Uh, but looks like the middle tower will be the trade. <coughs> excuse me, will be the trade for this. Shadow Shaman dropping his nice little Surfer Wars. They might be going for kills on Bristol, but not the best target. Surfer Wars getting dropped in the most unoptimal space ever. And the pings do come on the mini map. Top Raxes, they're taking, taking a little bit of damage. Broodmother, did she go for Necro? Yeah, she did in fact go for Necro 3. Shadowfiend did take some damage from that. So Necro 3 was the item choice item of choice for the Broodmother, so a lot of extra damage coming her way. Um, meanwhile, we got Shout or Bru Bristleback and crew running towards the Shadow Shaman. Shadow Shaman turns Bristle into a chicken. He immediately TPs out. Looks like Shadow Oh man, Ogre Magic gonna jump right on top of that Shadow Shaman. Gonna get hit with the Shallow Grave. Looks like Dazzle had not enough time to cast it. You must construct additional pylons with your HP, bro, was what Dazzle just said. Meanwhile, Dazzle, Medallion and Courage, use it on himself to break his armor and also heal up his armor. Or did he? I know, that's confusing. I mean, you can use it yourself, can't you? Shouldn't you just do nothing? I don't know, confused. He's using it on somebody, I don't see who he's using it on. There we go, negative armor coming up from Dazzle. And these guys don't really give much of a care. Bristle should actually care. Uh, negative armor for Bristle is actually a bad thing. Uh, Bristle does have his Bristle back, sure, but it only blocks so much. When you don't have armor, it just hurts a lot. Anyway, Ogre Magic are going to do a nice little bit of damage to DK. DK ult is available, but he's not level 16, guys, so he's not that scary. So let's go ahead and do this. BKB is available for DK. Uh, DK trying to go for He's going to go ahead and just drop his damage, drop a nice little stun, and he runs away. BKB available. Probably wants to bait out the fight a little bit more, but Scotty's available for the Shadow Fiend, and Shadow Fiend going to go for the damage, just knocking him down, throwing those baseballs at him. DK not having the best of times. Crimson Guard gets used. That's Song coming from Prince Spirit, putting DK into the middle of everything. BKB, oh, Black Hole getting used. Sorry, BKB finally running up on top of DK. Black Hole does get used by Nigma. Beautiful Black Hole as well. DK still alive somehow. He will officially be going down. Looks like that will be the death as well of the Shadow Shaman. Everybody buys back immediately. Maz buyback in the world. And they're going to go for kills off Ogre Magic. Not going to be able to find him. Prince Spirit going to show up. They're going to try to go for kills off of her. It looks like yes, they will be able to get slow. I think we're going to be the next next least important one. Looks like Sha <laughs> Shadow Fink's going to kill on top of something. I don't know. I wasn't paying attention. Looks like a lot of death, a lot of death coming towards Shadow Shaman. Shadow Shaman just trying to use his last breath to kill the Bristleback. Bristleback gonna be able to get the cool spray in time, and Mantis will be losing his life here officially. No more stuns available. Oh my gosh, no, he will be staying alive! Mantis stays alive. That is scary. Mantis stays alive anyway, and uh, looks like he'll, he'll just be, uh, you know, healing on up, buying himself some very big item. Like a Sanji and Yasha, because why not just get more Sanji and Yashas? And he also has some Vladimir's offering, so he's ready to go for it. He says, Yep, I got this, bro. I'm survivable enough to survive all y'all peoples. Let's do this. And uh, meanwhile, we got DK level 14, not level 16 just yet. I'm so sad about this, because I think DK level 16 is like probably one of the coolest carries in the world, because he just does so much damage for no apparent reason. But guys, I don't know if he'll be able to make it. Two racks is down, or basically two racks is down. Uh, one racks down, okay. One racks down, and also the bottom tower has been sieged effectively enough towards God. <laughs> and the pinging, the pinging, the pings do come through. 
Looking for something. Jarring and working on a Scotty by the looks of it. So Mask of Madison to Scotty. Smoke the Seed does get used. These guys are going to go ahead and run on forward. The spiders. Spiders are uh, surrounding creeps and killing them. And meanwhile, down bottom, Mantis is like, yo, bro, I'm just going to go ahead and push this tower. And they're drawing arrows. I think they're drawing. Oh, man, that was a nice arrow. Yeah, they drew arrows. I think they see. They see the Draw Ranger. And the Spinalings from Brew are going to continue to push mid. Ogre Mantis are trying to burn them down. And Brood reveals the smoke of the seat, and they're gonna go for a Necro Book. Does come through as well. Bottom Tower getting siege right now by Eidolons and Creeps alike. Uh, there will be a lot of damage going the way of that. Meanwhile, Team Fight's happening mid. We got uh, Brood Mother ulti coming through. I hear it. I don't see where she's at though. Brood Mother is right on over here in the middle of the fight, trying to go for some kills. Just gets herself a kill on top of Shadow Fiend. Nice, important kill for her to get. Now she's gonna go for a kill on top of somebody next. Look at DK drop himself a stun, but he's sadly gonna be getting surrounded. BKB can be already used. Shallow Grave coming from Dazzle just in time. Swap from Virgin Spirit gonna be, pull be pulling Nisha into the worst spot possible. Looks like the stun does come through on top of DK. Last person to go down was the Dazzle as well. Enigma chasing whoever he can. Dry Ranger continuing the run. She is officially a Ranger on the run. Uh, she might be able to find himself an Enigma, but Enigma has. His ulti available. Oh no, looks like Tornistic Blink Dagger is available. Mask of Man is immediately getting used up by Jaron. Just gonna immediately lose that buff because, guys, this is a buff. And now Jaron just throws out silence. Gonna go and TP away. That's a max out. That's a level 2 silence, sorry. So it only lasts 4 seconds. Just long enough for the TP out of there. So nice that she got it out just in time uh, before Nigma can drop that Malefice because Malefice would have been her death. That lasts 3 or does 3 instants and you stun last 1 second and it strikes every 2 seconds. So that's basically a 7, almost 8. Is it? So the first one happens. And then it waits two seconds, and the second one happens, and the next one waits. So it's one second. Wait. Three. One second. Four. Wait. Six. One second. That's seven seconds, yeah. It's called that, right? It's about seven seconds time. No, yeah, four. Yeah, four. Okay, whatever. Anyway, Observer War, Central War is getting killed. Geometry Sight, is that available? Yeah, Jimmy Two sides up on Ogre Magic, so just denying all kinds of vision. And now Bristle and Cruz are saying, yeah, come on, dare you. I dare you to stop us. We're going to continue to push. Two Rack is officially down, and look at this whole entire lane. Wow, they have not claimed this anything in this lane. I'm actually a little bit sad about that. Very disappointed. Cool Blue is sad. But they're going to go ahead and just go for the Tier 1 so I can give them a Fortify back and just make them take a little bit longer. Bristle Bang working on what looks to be an AC, so he can just do a little bit more damage, have a little bit more armor, and have a lot of fun doing it. Mantis, no warpath stack, sadly. Let's pop those quills. There we go. Just one stack. And one stack gives him 30 damage? Cool. And they're gonna go for a fight. Looks like they are gonna go for it. Shadow Fiend in the middle of it. He's gonna actually be able to TP out just in time. And they're gonna go ahead and just divert their attention once again. Uh, Shadow Shaman coming on the backside. He has his ulti available. That's gonna be nice for tearing down towers. And it looks like, oh man, I didn't realize those two racks down on both sides pretty much. Uh, I did not realize that at all. And they've been doing a good job of getting these racks in the background because Cool Blue has not been paying no attention at all. TPs are coming through. Tier 1 is gonna be going down for the price of a tier. Tier 2. This is tier 2 will be going down. Vince Spear looking for a swap. She actually gets a swap on top of DK. DK might be a little bit BKB getting popped immediately. Does not want to get stunned out by this. Enigma Black Hole coming into the middle of it. He catches himself one. DK has no stun available. He did just use it, unfortunately. And now we got Supreme gonna be trying to TP out. She might be able to make it live. Looks like nope. The answer's no. Dazzle does TP out though. A lot of a lot of shenanigans going back and forth in this game, guys. Holy crap. Meanwhile, we got the Radiant. The last of the Radiant gonna be going down. Well, that's the radiant available in this area, that is. Enigma, Enigma going to continue to chase the brood, and brood going to continue to chase the Enigma. Uh, Broodmother's spiderling is going to just walk right on up to here. And now we got Broodmother just waiting in the jungle. Ogre has the sentries available. Uh, Broodmother will be able to see Ogre Magi. Oh, Ogre Magi sees her. Oh, he pings. He pings. He blinks. A midget blink. And now Broodmother's spiderling is just going to run back and forth. Just trying to give her as much vision as possible. Just a very patient spider, that's what she is. That's all she is. And she also has a negative damage coming up from the uh, Vintage Spirit stupid thing. So that's gonna suck. Top tower is Meanwhile, bad. Top Tower is gonna be going now. Fortify is available for the Radiant, so they can drop that if they need to, but they're probably gonna save it for the Tier 3 because the Tier 3 is a little bit more important. Uh, we got somebody on the bottom pushing this bottom lane. It's gonna be DK. Level 15, almost level 16, guys. We're about to see the amazing carry DK with a level 7. Uh, well, three times, four times used BKB. You know, Dazzle drops a negative armor. Shadow Fiend and crew just jump straight on top of him. Dazzle in a lot of trouble. He might be able to get the Shadow Grave up, but it looks like no, not enough time to even think. Buy back immediately because he knows he needs to be alive for this fight. Top Raxes might be going on. Mega Creeps are going to be available here soon. Meanwhile, we got Broodmouth just going for the straight up push. Vince Spirit going to be the last one to survive as far as uh, helping, helping to defend against this. And Exotic Deer going to continue to go for the damage, trying to give himself a little bit more heal. Meanwhile, Top Child is going to be going down. TP's galore coming through. Shadow Fiend going to be the first one to show up. Or sorry, Bristle going to be the first one to show up. Trying 
good for kills off side with you. Exactly, might be going down anyway. We want to hurt Vision Spirit stomp on top of DK. DK, BKB is available, but it looks like he's not going to be able to use it. He might be able to use the SE. Okay, he's waiting for a swap, and he can use it now, but it looks like it's too much damage coming his way. Officially, everybody getting wrecked as fast as they possibly can. Meanwhile, I got Jaron J versus the Enigma, and Enigma B uh, uh, Black Hole was already used, so his use is officially gone. Shadow Summon Serpent ones were used. Probably want to save those for when the defense really is needed, but they really wanted that kill. If you can kill the Enigma, you can win the war. You can win the game. But Bristleback is probably one of the bigger nuisances in this whole entire game. Also, Shadowfiend just with a Scotty, just having so much fun doing whatever the heck he wants. Ogre Miser almost has himself an Agonist Scepter, uh, basically one piece away from it. If he kills himself like one more person, like a Jar Ranger and Supreme. Oh, looks like Dazzle going to get jumped on. A Shallow Grave might be coming through. Beautiful styles coming from Jar Ranger, just able to keep Dazzle alive long enough. And Dazzle going to go ahead and try to deny himself. Or he might be able to force staff in 11 seconds. Looks like no, he's getting stunned up and he's getting slowed up. And the ancients might be able to kill him. Looks like no Bristle Back kills him. Bristle Back with too many deeps and Brew Mullet just like, oh no, they're coming. Oh, they're in my house. And Mega Creeps are available on the side of uh, HR, so yeah, it's gonna be really hard for these guys to fight back from. Speaking of fighting back from, we got Vince Spirit immediately, immediately swapping in that Brew Mullet. Brew Mullet getting just whaled on down. Shadow Shaman throwing out the nice little slow, uh, nice little silence. Yeah, stun. On top of whoever that was, DK getting slowed to death right now. Shadowfiend just hitting him in the back with the baseballs. It looks like Broomother and Broomother. Jarns are going to be the one to go down. DK is available alive. But no, it looks like he's going to lose his life anyway. Bristleback still alive. Crimson Guard getting popped. DK dropping a nice little fire. Not going to be enough. Shadowfiend with a nice little, nice little stun on top of Shadowfiend. Shadowfiend still alive right now. Crimson Guard showing his strength right now. I think, I think if I'm not mistaken, the uh, base does, yeah, it does about 200 damage. So that's a lot of block that it just did. And he does 200 damage really fast. Looks like it's gonna be it. They're gonna go for some fountain dives. And Bristle, gonna eat a few cools. And there goes there goes the Shadow Shaman. And that's a swap coming from Dazzle. Dazzle gonna Shadow Grave himself immediately. Black Hole comes from Enigma. That's gonna be the death. The death of whoever that was. And that's gonna be it. The game ends. GG well played coming up for everybody. That was a very intense game. Very back and forth. Very back and forth. To an extent, it was back and forth. I thought Bristle was going to have the hardest of times. But yeah, cool spray. Cool spray OP, please, nerf. That's going to be it, guys. My name is Cool Blue. I'll support you guys this game in the... I bet, in the MSI Dragon Battle number 3. Uh, this has been a Hellraiser's versus... Let's do it. It's a very interesting game. Interesting game. I like... I like the fact that Bristle is really cool in that game. I don't know, Bristle, Bristle is one of my favorite heroes in the game. Not one of my favorite heroes, but he's a hero that I like to see played. So, he's played really well, so really, 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 really well played by Mantis. Also, shout out to everybody else who played the game, and uh, that's going to be it. So, if you guys want to check me out on my YouTube and stuff, you can check my YouTube at youtube.com slash coolbluedota, that's C-U-L-B-L-U-D-O-T-A. You can also check me out on my Twitch, which is twitch.tv slash coolblue, that's C-U-L-B-L-U. You can also check me out on Twitter, which is at coolbluedota, if I'm not mistaken. So, go check it out. And that's going to be it. So my name is Cool Blue. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And as always, I'll see you guys whenever.